Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be doing the stoichiometry section of the 2023 USNTO local exam. So this is questions 1 through 6. Uh, let's start with question 1. A 1 gram sample of which compound will produce the greatest amount of carbon dioxide after complete combustion with excess oxygen? So let's write out the combustion reactions for uh, all of these. So remember a combustion reaction is your hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Um, let's bounce this out. Uh, we need a two here and a two here. Um, and let's do the rest do the same for the rest of these. Okay, so these are the balanced reactions. As you can see, um, for every one mole of your hydrocarbon, um, you produce however many um, moles of carbon that you have. So three, like C three H six, would be would produce three moles of carbon dioxide. But of course, the question asks um, which which uh, sample is going to produce the most carbon dioxide, assuming you have one gram of the sample. So let's find out how many moles of carbon dioxide we produce per each. Um, sample. So uh, methane CH4, let's find out how many moles we have. So we have one gram of your methane divided by the molar mass, which is going to be 16. Um, and then for the second one is going to be one divided by 36 plus six is 42. And then one over uh, 86. And then one over 114. Okay, um, so let's find out how many moles of carbon dioxide we produce for each one of these. So for the first one is one divided by 16, um, and we just have one mole of that. Um, so that's how many moles of carbon dioxide you produce. For the second one is gonna be one divided by 42 times three moles. Um, for the third one, one divided by 86 times six. And then for the last one, one divided by 114 times eight. Um, and as you can see, the one that produces the most carbon dioxide is going to be the second one, um, C3H6. And that makes sense because that one is the uh, hydrocarbon with the, the greatest mole percent or mass percent of carbon. Hey everyone, I just want to say if some of these explanations seem a little fast paced to you, then I have a lot of videos on my channel that are more tutorial based. Uh, they can help you learn the content and then come back to these tests to take full advantage of them. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As far as I know, these are the only videos on YouTube that have work solutions for the USNCO. Uh, so a like and a subscription would help it reach more people. Um, and that's it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. Let's go to question two. Rhenium consists of two stable isotopes, rhenium-185 and rhenium-187. The average atomic mass of rhenium is 186.2 AMU. What is the mole percent of, uh, of rhenium-185 in rhenium? So we know that 185 times your mole fraction, x, um, plus 187 times 1 minus uh, x is going to equal the atomic mass, which is 186.2. Um, and so let's do out the math. So 185x um, minus 187x plus 187 is going to equal 186.2. So that's negative 2x. Uh, subtract 187 on both sides, so uh, negative 0.8, um, and then x is 0.4, um, which is 40%. So your mole percent is going to be 40. So the answer is A. Okay, let's move on to question three. A 10 gram sample of a soluble barium salt is treated with an excess of sodium sulfate to precipitate 8.93 grams of barium sulfate. Which barium salt is it? So let's write out the reaction that's happening. You have some sort of barium salt um, that's gonna have this general form where A is your anion. Um, and you have a two because that's just um, all what all the answer choices look like. Um, and that reacts is treated with sodium sulfate, so Na2SO4, um, to produce your barium sulfate. And you're also gonna produce your uh, NaA. So there's two pieces of information that we know. We know that the initial sample was 10 grams, and we also know that 8.93 grams of your precipitate formed. Um, and we want to find out which barium salt it was. And the easiest way to do that is going to be able to uh, is going to be finding out what the molar mass of your barium salt was. So how do we find out how, what the molar mass of your barium salt was? Well, if we find out how many moles of barium sulfate we have, 
we can use that um, because we know that the initial barium salt, uh, the moles of them are in a one to one ratio. So however many moles you produce is gonna be however many moles of your barium salt you had to begin with. So how do we find out the, how many moles of your barium sulfate was uh, precipitated? Well, let's just divide by the molar mass, which is 233.4. So 8.93 divided by 233.4 is 0.038 moles um, and so we have 0.038 moles also of your barium salt so we know that 10 grams of your barium salt is 0.038 moles and we want to find out the molar mass so we can set up a proportion to find out how much one mole of your sample weighs um, and so if you do 10 divided by that 0.038 value your molar mass comes out to about uh, 261.4 grams per mole. And the answer choice that is closest to that is answer choice C, which has a molar mass of 261.3 grams. Let's move on to question four. How much hydrated strontium hydroxide is needed to prepare 150 mils of solution in which your hydroxide concentration is 0.1 molar? Um, so let's find out how many moles of uh, hydroxide you have you have a 0.15 uh, liter solution and your concentration is 0.1 molar. So that is 0.015 moles of hydroxide. So basically we need to uh, get 0.015 moles of hydroxide from your hydrated strontium hydroxide. Um, for every one mole of this that you have, you're going to have two moles of hydroxide. Uh, because there are two hydroxide ions in the hydrated compound. Um, so if we need 0.015 moles of hydroxide, how many moles of our overall uh, strontium salt are we going to need? Well, we're going to need half of that. So 0 0.0075 moles of that. Um, and so our answer choices are in grams. So we need to find out how much this many moles of that weighs. So let's multiply by the molar mass, which is 265. 0.76 grams per mole um, so let's do 0 0.0075 times 265.76 um, and that is about 1.99 grams and that is answer choice a all right let's move on to question five which procedure produces a 0.2 molar solution of sodium sulfate Let's go through our answer choices. So A, mixing uh, 500 mils of 0.4 molar sodium hydroxide with uh, 500 mils of 0.2 molar um, sodium sulfate. Um, so what we care about is our sodium sulfate and we have a 0.2 molar solution of that. But uh, as you can see, it gets diluted because you mix it with your uh, sodium hydroxide. And so since you're doubling the volume, what that's gonna do is that's going to, going to half your concentration. So your overall concentration is gonna be 0.1 molar of sodium uh, sulfate, and that is not what you need. Let's go to uh, B, mixing 300 mils of 1.2 molar sodium hydroxide with 600 mils of 0.3 molar uh, sulfuric acid. So this answer choice does not have uh, sodium sulfate at all. However, you have to understand what this 0.2 molar uh, sodium sulfate is. So in this uh, solution, what, what's gonna happen is that the sodium and the sulfate ions are going to dissociate. And so uh, you're gonna have a 0.4 molar concentration of your sodium ions and a 0.2 molar concentration of your sulfate ions. Um, the reason the sodium is double the sulfate is because there are two sodium ions in a sodium sulfate um, uh, molecule. So, uh, let's find out what our concentrations of sodium and sulfate are in this. So we have 300 mils of 1.2 molar sodium hydroxide. How many moles of hydroxide is that? Well, we have 0.3 liters times 1.2 molar. So that is 0.36 moles of hydroxide. Um, let's find out the concentration. So that's 0.36 moles over the volume. So what's the final volume? Well, you're mixing 300 mils with 600 mils, so your final volume is 0.9 liters, um, and that is a 0.4 molar sodium concentration. That went kind of off screen, but that's fine. Um, 
And so when your sodium checks out, let's do the same thing for your sulfate. You have 600 mL of 0.3 molar, molar um, sulfuric acid, so 0.6 liters times 0.3 molar, that is 0.18 moles of your sulfate ion. Um, whoops, that is off screen. Let me move that. Okay. Um, and let's find the concentration. So 0. Uh, 0. 0.18, 0. 0.18 molar, or moles divided by 0. 0.9 liters. Um, that is 0. 0.2 uh, molar sulfate, uh, sulfate ion. And so B checks out. B produces the right concentration for your sodium and the right concentration for your sulfate. So, so B does look like a good candidate. But let's make sure C and D are wrong. Um, C says dissolving 0.2 molar sodium um, uh, sulfate in 500 mL of water. Um, 0.2 molar, so 0.2 moles divided by 0.5 liters. That is a concentration of 0.4 molar. So it's not C. And then D, diluting 400 mL of 0.3 molar sodium sulfate to a final volume of 1 liter. Um, and so how many moles of sodium sulfate are you going to have? You're going to have 0.4 liters times 0.3 molar. So 0.12 moles and then divided by one liter. So that's going to have a concentration of 0.12 molar. So D is also wrong. Um, and so your answer is B. All right, let's move on to question six. 10 grams of an alkaline metal chloride salt is dissolved in 90 grams of water. The solution has a vapor pressure that is 3.2% lower than that of pure water at the same temperature. What is the salt? So just like every other question six of a US NCO local exam, uh, this is a colligative properties question. And this is vapor pressure uh, lowering. And so vapor pressure, the equation for vapor pressure lowering is that your change in vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of your solute times the vapor pressure of your solvent. Okay. Um, so in this case, your solute is your sodium, is your alkali metal chloride, um, and your solvent is the water. Now we're told that the vapor pressure is 3.2% lower than that of pure water. So we don't actually know what the vapor pressure of the water is, but let's just say that the vapor pressure of your solvent, um, the, va the vapor pressure of your water, let's just say that is W. So your change in vapor pressure is going to be 0.032 W uh, because the vapor pressure is lowered by 3.2% of your um, pure water. Um, so let's write out the rest of our, uh, of our equation. And then the vapor pressure of our solvent is W um, since we defined it as such. Um, and so what, we, what you can do now is you can cancel out the W's and what you're left with is 0.032 is equal to the mole fraction of your solute. That is helpful because remember, we want to find out the identity of our salt. And the way you're going to do that is by finding out the molar mass of your salt. So let's, um, let's use that relationship over here. Your mole fraction is going to be, so wait, so we know it's 0 0.32, 0 0.032, and the mole fraction is going to be the number of moles of solute uh, divided by the moles of the total moles. Um, total moles. So how many moles of our solute do we have? Remember, just like every other colligative property, uh, vapor pressure lowering depends on the number of particles of your solute. Um, so we are going to have uh, 0.032 is equal to the moles of solute. So that's going to be 10 grams divided by the molar mass. But as I, as I was saying, um, your, your, your alkali metal chloride salt is going to dissolve into two particles. So although you have that many moles of your salt, you're going to have to multiply this value by two to get the total number of moles of solute. All right, so that's the moles of solute uh, divided by the total mo total uh, number of moles. The total number of moles is going to be that value that we just calculated for the moles of solute um, plus the moles of water. So the moles of water is 90 grams divided by the molar mass of water, which remember water is H2O, so it has a molar mass of 18, 18 grams. 
Um, at this point, you can multiply both sides by the denominator, um, and that'll get you 0.64 uh, divided by molar mass plus uh, 90 divided by 18 times 0 0.032, uh, so plus 0 0.16 um, is going to equal 20 divided by the molar mass. I've neglected the units here just for simplicity. Um, and so we can subtract uh, 0.64 divided by molar mass on both sides. So 19.36 divided by molar mass is equal to 0.16. Um, and then your molar mass is just going to equal 19.36 divided by 0.16. Uh, so your molar mass is uh, molar mass is equal to 121 grams per mole. Uh, that went a little off screen, but um, now we need to figure out which compound here has a molar mass of 121 grams per mole. Lithium chloride has a molar mass of about 42.4, uh, so that's wrong. Sodium chloride is 58.4, potassium chloride is 74.5, and rubidium chloride is like 120.9, which is basically 121. Um, so that is your answer. And that was questions one through six. I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned something. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.